Hello and welcome from Trend Signal for our review of the data and events of the week beginning the 7th of December. Um, very busy week last week, probably the two out of the three most important data releases uh, this month, uh, that being the uh, ECB's uh, announcement last Thursday and the non-farm payroll on Friday. Well, unfortunately, uh, Mario Draghi did disappoint for the first time for some time. Um, the ECB cut its deposit rate by 10 basis points to uh, minus 0.3%. So the European Central Bank charging banks three, sorry, 30 basis points or 0.3% to lodge money with them. Uh, and they've uh, extended the uh, asset purchase program or the QE uh, by six months to at least until the end of March 2017. Um, a lot less than what was expected. And I think that's probably down to what Draghi had been saying to various uh, press members. Uh, the market was expecting possibly a cut to minus 0.4% on the deposit rate uh, and an extension and an enlargement in the quantitative easing. Um, this was certainly uh, underwhelming and its effects were felt immediately as uh, the euro rebounded sharply versus the dollar and bond markets uh, really missed a beat and uh, fell alarmingly uh, initially. But uh, certainly Monday morning, things seem to have recovered a little bit as a, a little more um, calm as the markets backtrack a little bit with bonds and equities quite a bit higher first thing. Uh, time will tell if it's uh, a longer lasting recovery, of course. The other impact was a significant hit, as I said, to the uh, US uh, dollar or more to the point to the euro, which rallied sharply. Uh, mainly down to the fact that uh, it's the only game in town. Um, selling the euro has, is a very popular, well, crowded trade, you'd call it. Um, and um, it was uh, a run for the exit that caused one of the biggest rallies in the euro uh, since 2009. Um, so that had its immediate effect on uh, the DAX and the euro stocks who have benefited, obviously, which indices have benefited from a weaker euro. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the um, data and events coming out this week. Following on such a busy week last week, not surprisingly, this week the data points are fairly far and few between, really. Uh, it may look busy, this particular calendar, but there's not any real announcements. We've got central banks announcing um, uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, uh, our MPC here in the UK um, and the Swiss National Bank, but um, really we're not expecting any movement from any of those banks uh, really, so uh, you can take it as read there'll be an unchanged decision from all those three. Other than that this week, um, we have uh, detail on retail sales, which actually will be quite interesting from the US as we uh, uh, see how the uh, uh, U.S. consumer is reacting to pretty much record low oil prices for the certainly for the last uh, several uh, uh, years, um, and that will be feeding through hopefully into increased retail sales. We're expecting a, a fairly modest number, a plus 0.2 percent, but the feeling is that might actually uh, be eclipsed. Um, so that is probably one of the more important numbers out in the U.S. Obviously, with the non-farm payroll last Friday uh, hitting 211, beating the 201,000 forecast, not only that, the whopping uh, number of 270-odd, I think, uh, in reported in November for October's jobs uh, was eclipsed as well, I think, hitting uh, above 290,000, I think 298,000. So very, very strong day today, and I think uh, the U.S. rate rise now is very much a shoe-in, and um, markets reacted very positively to it on Friday, probably down to the fact that the, the belief is that uh, there will be, uh, the rate rises will be very, very slow and um, will have unlikely to have an immediate impact on equities, which were enjoying one of their biggest bounces, certainly in the U.S., for uh, the last three months. Okay, so other data out uh, uh, this week. We've got uh, Chinese data. Uh, it's quite interesting to see uh, their inflation data. That's out on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Um, 
The uh, Consumer Price Index and Producer Price Index uh, is coming out. This is the Consumer Price in Index listed here. Um, interestingly enough, the Producer Price Index has been negative for 44 consecutive months, which is pretty extraordinary. And projections are for another decline of 0.5% in November uh, from the previous month. Um, consumer prices are estimated to have gained 1.4%. Uh, in that same period, up slightly from the 1.3% uh, last month. Um, other than that, um, we have um, our central banks that I mentioned at the beginning, the Swiss National Bank and our own Monetary Policy Committee here in the UK. Obviously, we're not expecting any rate change and the voting intentions, we believe, will remain the same as the previous month. So no immediate impact they're expected on gilts or sterling or indeed uh, the FTSE. Uh, that's really it pretty much. Um, probably the most uh, important data left in this month as we uh, run up to Christmas over the next couple of weeks is the Fed meeting, uh, the last one of the year on the 15th and 16th of December when we expect on the 16th of, of December next week that is that the Fed will raise interest rates for the first time since 2006. Um, there aren't really many um, Fed officials speaking this week, so we're not going to get much of an insight. We had Janet Yellen speaking twice last week, but uh, there is a, a Fed member, James Bullard, talking from the St. Louis Federal Reserve, but he's not actually on the FOMC committee. Um, so the, the impact is likely to be quite... Uh, muted really on that uh, and that's it really uh, thank you very much for listening uh, bye for now if you would like more information about trading the right way trend signal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar take a look at the trend signal website for the latest events and to book your free place